everybody wants to be blessed, including me. I mean, we all want that. We pray and ask God for things and we want things and we see things and we think that others have more than we do sometimes. But when is the last time you said, Lord, teach me how to be a blessing? Well, you're in luck. I want to share with you some principles in this particular episode of Bishop Littman Live on how to be a blessing. In an ever-changing world, everybody needs a relationship with a never-changing God. Welcome to Bishop Littman Live. Welcome, Welcome back, back to another episode of Bishop Living Live. If this is your first time viewing our channel, welcome aboard. I'm glad to welcome you as a new family member of the Bishop Living Live family. Be sure to subscribe. By all means, if you are a regular visitor, welcome back to the family. I'm so excited to have you here. Hey, make sure you meet me in the comments. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. I look forward to sharing with you virtually in these discussions. Well, in this particular episode, we're going to be talking about how to be a blessing. You know, the world is always revolving around me, the unholy trinity, I like to call it, me, myself, and I. And there's so many people who suffer from a condition that I like to call I-itis. That means that everything about their lives, from their prayer lives to their daily conversations, revolve all around themselves. There are people who pray sort of like this. Lord, this is Jimmy, and you know what to give me. Or how about this one? Lord, bless me, my four, and no more. But that's not how we should live. Neither is it how we should pray. In fact, while God has no problem whatsoever with us having blessings, he does have a problem when our blessings have us. Instead of asking all the time to get things and to acquire more material possessions, we ought to pray, Lord, show me how to be a blessing. Well, in this episode, the final verses of chapter number two of Philippians, Paul teaches us principles that will help us to be a blessing to other people. We read now in verse number 19 in the Living Bible Translation, Philippians chapter number two, where Paul says these words, if the Lord is willing, I will send Timothy to see you soon. Then when he comes back, he can cheer me up by telling me how you are getting along. In that one verse, we hear so much love and appreciation for Timothy, who was Paul's assistant that the church at Philippi had sent to minister to him while he was in prison. And as Timothy was there, encouraging Paul, lifting Paul up. We hear Paul talking about the blessing of having Timothy and the blessing of sending Timothy back to the church at Philippi so that he could find out secondhand from a very reliable source how they're really getting along. And Paul teaches us, number one, that we ought to inspire one another. You see, to truly be a blessing to others, we have to inspire one another. You know what that word inspire means? It literally means to put spirit in. Spirit is another word for life. So to inspire literally means to put life in one another. Now think about how critical and crucial this relationship between Paul and Timothy and the church at Philippi was. After all, Paul is on an uncertain path. He doesn't know the outcome of what would become of his life while he was there in prison. He didn't know if he was going to live or to die. And yet he has Timothy there in person who has taken his life and put it on hold that he might attend to the needs of Paul. And while Paul is preaching and ministering, Timothy is there ministering to Paul. He is speaking life into Paul, who is unsure exactly how much life he would have left. What if we were to live that way, that we were to put life in others to the degree that no matter how much life they literally had left, 
They lived every second to the fullest because we are in their lives. I want you to think about something for a moment. Of all the relationships and communications that you have with the people you work with, the people that you live with, the people that you're related to, how much time do you spend putting life into people as opposed to pulling life out of people? Mm, what a, a sobering question that is, isn't it? And it's sobering because we have to think about the things that we discuss, the time that we spend. We have to think about the type of words that we use, the reactions that we give one another. Because the love that we share and show with those that we interact with every day can put life in them or inspire them. Or consequently, the reverse is true that the words that we say and the ways that we behave can take life out of people. You see, positive words bring positive results. Negative words bring negative results. Cold words freeze people. Warm words heat people. Hot words burn people. So we have to think about our interaction and think about, am I putting life into or taking life out of the people that have to interact with me on a daily basis. Now, the 20th verse says that there is no one like Timothy for having a real interest in you. That's so profound because Paul teaches us that the second principle we must learn, not only must we inspire one another, but we also must have interest in one another. Now, you might think that that's an overstatement that we should have interest in one another. But if you really think about it, Paul and Timothy illustrate for us what life should look like, that we are so consumed with ministering to others that we are willing to put our own plans on hold. And that's really what it means to be a blessing and not just get a blessing. Now, look, look at what Paul says in the 21st verse. Of Philippians 2. He says, everyone else seems to be worrying about his own plans and not those of Jesus Christ. But you know, Timothy, he has been just like a son to me in helping me preach the good news. I hope to send him to you just as soon as I find out what is going to happen to me here. Verse 24, and I am trusting the Lord that soon I myself may come to see you. Verse 25, Meanwhile, I thought I ought to send Epaphroditus back to you. You sent him to help me and my need well, and he and I have been real brothers working and battling side by side. Now I am sending him home again, for he has been homesick for all of you and upset because you heard that he was ill. Now, there is so much in this particular passage, because in this passage, we see that Epaphroditus is there with Timothy and Paul. And Epaphroditus has so much interest in others that he, too, has put his life on hold to help to build and expand the ministry of Paul. And even during his service, Paul says he got sick almost to the point of death. But notice this little tidbit that Paul abruptly puts in there. He says he got upset, watch this, not because he was sick, but because the church back home learned of his illness. You see, Epaphroditus was so focused on his calling and his ministry that he didn't even want the people back home to worry about him. He lived a truly selfless life where it was not all about him and not all about his feelings and his emotions and his thoughts and what he was going through. And there are times that you find that so many people focus more on their feelings and their emotions and what they're going through than they do their ultimate purpose. But Paul says, in order for us to be a blessing to others, number one, we have to inspire one another Number two, we have to take real interest in one another. When is the last time that you held a conversation that you did less talking and more listening instead of more talking 
and less listening. So think about that for a minute. Are you showing interest, genuine interest in others? Do you ask people how they're doing and actually await a detailed response? Or is it just a filler in a conversation? In order to be a blessing to other people, you have to show interest. And you have to do it from a genuine heart and be willing to put yourself to the side that you can minister to God and through the ministry of someone else. Now, he says to us in the 27th verse of Philippians 2, he surely was, that is, Epaphroditus was sick. In fact, he almost died. But God had mercy on him and on me too not allowing me to have this sorrow on top of everything else. Verse 28. So I am all the more anxious to get him back to you again, for I know how thankful you will be to see him. And that will make me happy and lighten all my cares. So Paul knew that the church at Philippi would show interest in Epaphroditus because they were already concerned about him when they heard of his illness. Listen, when you hear of other people going through different situations, make it your business to show interest in them. That's how you can be a blessing to others. Well, Paul goes on to give us a third principle that is also equally as powerful. In the 29th and 30th verse of Philippians chapter 2, Paul teaches us not only must we inspire one another, not only must we show interest in one another, but thirdly, we must be intentional with one another. Now look at the 29th verse of Philippians chapter number two. Welcome him in the Lord with great joy and show your appreciation. For he risked his life for the work of Christ and was at the point of death while trying to do for me the things you couldn't do because you were far away. Paul's instructions to the church at Philippi is once Epaphroditus arrives back home. Be intentional in how you receive him. And this is such a worthy and timely message for us today that we should not take one another for granted. We never know when it's going to be the last time that we gather, we see each other, or that we have an opportunity to engage in showing affection one toward another. And so Paul teaches the church at Philippi and us today vicariously as modern day believers that we must not take each other for granted, but instead we must be intentional with one another, deliberate in making efforts to reach out, in making efforts to love one another, in making efforts to ensure that others know that they are loved by us. We cannot assume that people know how we feel. But we must make intentional and deliberate actions in order to show love and to show appreciation for all others have been through. Paul says you must be intentional in receiving Epaphroditus to the church at Philippi and to show your appreciation. Why? For he risked his life for the work of Christ and was at the point of death while trying to do for me the things you couldn't do because you were far away. What a wonderful and heartwarming teaching this is that Paul gives us through this beautiful letter called Philippians on how to be a blessing. So I want to pray with you before we close. And I want to pray that you would be a blessing to someone else. If you'd like to be a part of my E-class Simply send an email and request to be a part of the e-class. Send it to clearstudies at gmail.com. If you need prayer and would like for it to be kept confidential, feel free to send me a prayer request at prayerwithbishop at gmail.com. Well, let me close with prayer. Father, thank you for my dear friends who are watching this video listening to this podcast, I pray, God, that you would help us to love as Paul taught the church at Philippi to love and teach us how to be a blessing. Give us an intentionality in our spirits that we would receive others with joy, with appreciation, 
ever mindful of all that they've experienced, being sensitive to others' needs, and help us to show your love so that the world, as it looks upon the life of the church and believers, would ultimately believe in you because of the joy and the peace and the harmony that they see experienced by those who follow you. Now, God, help us to move ourselves out of the way and to allow you to have your way. Help us to put ourselves to the side and do all we can possibly do to reach out to others. Help us to be intentional. Help us not to take life or each other for granted another day. And we thank you for every blessing. Bless our nation, our world, our state, our city, and all governmental authorities. Give them your wisdom and teach them how to put others above themselves. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, make sure you comment, like, share, and subscribe. By all means, share this with a friend, and I look forward to sharing with you in the next episode of Bishop Littman Live. Until then, take care. Thank <laughs> you.